Hey guys, how's it going? It's Kevin from LP24Audio.com. Guess what? Here to show you how to do some kick drum synthesis. Uh, the style that I'm going to be going for on this kick will be more oriented towards dance genres, EDM genres, whatever you want to call them, electronic kick drums, okay? Reminiscent of 909. Now, um, hopefully you can apply these concepts to any synth uh, that you use. I'm using Serum for one main reason and that's because um, I like the LFOs in it. We can customize their shapes precisely to get the kind of features we need of our timbre. So let's start with uh, a waveform like a sine wave or a sine wave. Uh, analog BD sine is um, pretty much a sine wave although if you look at it carefully here you can see it has minor harmonic content above the fundamental. Uh, if we boost the fundamental even more, it gets gets its volume uh, full there. Now, the main concept of kick drum synthesis here is pitch change over time. Okay, so we need a sine wave that drops in pitch, starts high, goes low, and the shape at which you do this will determine the timbre you get. Now, a lot of the times we have, uh, you know, we might open software like Nicky Romero Kick or uh, Big Kick or any of these other software companies. There are a lot of them coming out with new uh, kick drum synth products. But uh, I still like the old school scratch from Scratch Way, so I'm going to show you that way, and hopefully this will apply to anything you do. So here we go. Uh, first step LFO onto the course pitch. Why? course pitch is the smoothest pitch change. All these other ones are stepped uh, octaves, obviously going to fly up and down an octave. We don't want that. Semitones, fine tuning. Course pitch is smooth and um, we're going to have it go only in the positive direction. So it starts, right now it's going from positive to negative. Two ways to fix this. One is uh, alt or option shift and click on there and you get this uh, are moving to the right. The other way is in the matrix you could do the same thing right here. That's unipolar mode and here's bipolar mode. Okay so the pitch is only going to drop from where the blue line is there downwards. Okay let's have a listen though and we're going to have to adjust the amount at which it drops. I'm guessing about here but let's have a listen. Okay so volume would help. Okay. Now it's a chirp, so let's bring it down a couple octaves. Okay. So you can tell it has um, that pitch drop, but it's not sounding good yet. It's sounding a little bit cheesy, Tom-like. Let's see. Okay. Let's bring her up one more octave. Here we go. Okay, that's kind of the tone we're going for, believe it or not. Oh, uh, but here's the trick. We have to double click to add some nodes here and listen to the attack portion. We want a really fast drop here and then it's going to kind of even out. I might have to add a couple nodes. Bring this up an octave. See, about here, you gain that nice electronic dance uh, kick drum. Okay, so envelope shape is everything on the pitch, and um, oftentimes I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna show you how we could take it one step further. Oftentimes, I will implement a second LFO. By the way, I didn't do this 100% uh, proper. Let's change it to envelope mode. That means it re-triggers every time a note hits. Okay, envelope mode. Uh, this will induce a little bit of a click onto our timbre. So I'm going to do the same thing. LFO2 on the course pitch. Uh, option shift, click it. Okay, now have a listen to this. That's extreme. Here's a lighter setting. And then here's without any of it. You 
So, using two envelopes to get your pitch change uh, will help you dramatically, especially if you think of one of them as really steep, uh, it brings the pitch up really fast to drop back down to um, this this level and then that level. So in, in other words, they're adding together to combine your pitch change. And you kind of tune those to taste, you're going to get lots of different results. The other thing you might want to consider is volume uh, envelope. So again, I'm going to use an envelope uh, form of the LFO here on my level for the oscillator. Why don't I use this one? You could, but I just like the fact that you can double click and you can add your own nodes and get your own curvatures and shapes in here. Okay, so let's try that out. Let's see, uh, dragged it on there. Okay, so that's decent. Now, if you want more of a click, a uh, number of ways to do it. One is implement a noise oscillator or drag like, something like a hi-hat sample or another click that you made, uh, which I can show you guys how to do in another video from scratch. But uh, Serum here, we have lots of preset clicks, uh, you know, kick attacks, they call them. Uh, even the attack misc, you get some pretty cool, uh, you know, hi-hat kind of layers. So let's try the same volume envelope here, see if that works. If not, we'll do another envelope. We got one left. Okay. Now we need to put it in one shot mode. That's this guy. So it only plays through the sample once. Okay. So I don't like the length on it. Um, let's just stick with the sample so I can show you how we kind of go about changing that. Gain it right. So again, Here's an envelope. Okay. Let's go through it faster here. Okay, not bad. So uh, we basically would have time to tweak that. You could play with the pitch. It's like a little sampler, right? It's about where it was before, 51%. So what else could we do? Well, there's lots of possibilities, of course, with effects processing. Often in kick drum synthesis, what we're doing is uh, some EQ, maybe compression, and um, perhaps some kind of distortion or something to get a little bit of those harmonics out of there because we are on a sine wave pretty much, as you saw earlier. So let's try, um, I like to do parallel processing as well. So that just means 50% wet, 50% dry, or some, somewhere in between. So uh, the other thing you might want to do is try some of these envelopes on the mix or the drive, and you'll get various results on your click. So let's see here. See, that takes away a little too much for me, but small amounts. On the mix here, we can get just enough beef in there, okay, without sounding too square wave-ish, okay. So that's nice, and if you look at our spectrum here, we got uh, what seems to be a fundamental around 40. I might raise that a little bit by just changing the semitone here, okay. Of course, this stuff depends on your song. Right? It's all about context, but uh, we're just kind of going blindly at it here so you get the concepts. Okay, I might EQ a little bit, boost the fundamental if I could uh, assume it's around 50 or so. Okay, that seems a little much, but here we go. A little of that. Perhaps a high shelf to give some character up there. Okay, let's try compressing it too. Now, you know Serum has its uh, multiband mode, which brings out a lot of the highs and mids because it uses a upward expansion. So, not very good for this kick drum, but might be good for a layer or something.
Yeah, I think a light bit of compression works on the sound. Uh, I don't need to overly do it. The other thing I like to do is, uh, in Logic at least here, it's Control B, but you could uh, resample or bounce your track into place so you can see the audio waveform version. And uh, hopefully it works <laughs> with that message. Okay, here we are. I'm going to close this for a second. Uh, I do like to take a look at it visually. Sometimes uh, you might see, obviously sounds most important, but it's good to make sure that's perfectly on the beat here. See what I mean? Sometimes they start a little late, so this is where I grab the uh, slice tool or marquee and uh, line it up. Okay. Let's say that's the one hit I want. Give it a little fade out as well. Now, uh, Control E will drop into a sampler. Uh, let's just call it kick. Uh, this would be a good time where I kind of know what the frequency is. Uh, that can be something else we do in another video. Uh, so you can pitch your kicks properly to the key of your song. But, in fact, uh, you know what? I'll do that right now. I lied. So, here we go. It should be in the EXS24 sampler here. There we go. And uh, spread it across all the key ranges. So every note triggers it. That's C1 is going to be the root, uh, the pitch we originally made. But we can play it lower or higher. Right? So uh, let's find out the frequency of this. So something I should have done a while ago maybe uh, before I bounce in place, just so this step would be uh, done a little quicker. But I'll show you. One way to do this is uh, grab an EQ analyzer and find the lowest frequency in the signal. Now, uh, it does help to kind of look under here. We have a higher resolution analyzer. Might might show you a little more accurately what the lowest note is. Okay, but boosting with a uh, bell curve, not a shelf here. A bell will probably determine it, and a low, or sorry, a high narrow Q. Okay, when it becomes a pitch, you can kind of hum or hear that way. Then uh, that's when you could grab a tuner. Go to the utilities, or sorry, the uh, metering tuner. Now it should register a pitch here. It's leaning towards A sharp. What I like to do is grab a synth and just make sure. So any synth will do, play A sharp. I'm doing this on my QWERTY, so that would be a Y. I'm thinking it's actually, yeah, A sharp. Not Y, uh, that'd be G sharp. So, yeah, A sharp. So, what you do once you figure out the tune, go into your sampler, set the root to what was it, A sharp or aka B flat. Oh, they call it A sharp here. So, now if my song's in key, uh, sorry, if my song's in C, I would trigger a C kick and it would be perfectly in tune. If my song's in B flat, there we go. Now the bass note that you hear is in uh, the proper tuning. So hopefully that gives you some ideas uh, about getting your kick into the context of a song. Of course, that might be the point where we do some final touch-ups like EQ, compression, even further to kind of get the most out of your kick drum sample. Maybe layer it with some other kick drum samples that you have by trimming the end off or something like that. That's where you can get really creative. But, uh, you know, that's all I wanted to show you today. Hope that helps, you guys. And uh, leave me some feedback or comments if you want further information on this. Anyways, uh, and don't forget to check out lp24audio.com. Thanks.